Hey guys, uh, I got time for a real quick one here. We got this 2005 PT Cruiser. It's a 2.4 liter turbo. And uh, the gist of this is it's having transmission issues. And basically what it boils down to is the transmission control module is not waking up. So I'll show you what that looks like on the dash. And one second there. There we go. So you see how all of the gear indicators are lit up. And then sure enough, whoa. When we try to communicate with it, we get this here, no comm. But if we go back, if we go to communicate with the engine, Kimmin, Kimmin, uh, Kimmin. There we go. Um, we can, in fact, communicate with the engine. Pull up some data just to show you for sure. Come on. Come on. Oh my God, these things are slow. There we go. So we can communicate with the engine, no problems there. Um, when I first got into this, the, um, I know you lots of glare, when I first got into this, the tranny control module was working. I could read codes from it. And then by the time I went to go clear the codes, it went to that mode and could not communicate with it since. But at least we knew, know that it was capable of working at one point, which is good. But right now it's been a steady no calm. Okay, so now we can go to the transmission control um, wiring diagram. And on these vehicles here, the TCM is part of the powertrain control module. It's actually the, the far end connector there. So if you have a manual transmission vehicle, it'll only have the three connectors. And if you have an automatic, it'll have the fourth connector. So what that means, if we go here, we're looking at our tranny um, wiring diagram circuit. So this stuff right here, you know, our, our sensor ground connector two, that's part of the engine side. Um, same thing with right here, the C3, that's part of the engine side, that part's working. So if we go over here again, um, our communication stuff, C1, that's the engine. If, that, if we had any issues there, our engine computer would not work. So we're just after this side right here, C4. So all we're looking for, is there anything on here that could cause the transmission control module not to work? Well, sure enough, we do see two grounds and we see um, trans relay, trans relay, and then the green wire as well. So if we follow that over, that comes up here. Okay, we do have uh, a separate relay for the transmission control module with its own fuse. And the green wire here is the turn on. So the transmission control module turns itself on for the main powers. Um, that's it. Everything else is part of the engine computer side, nothing else external to this powertrain control module can be causing just this to not function, right? So, um, quick check, we can check the grounds um, and we can check the to see if those powers are active. So, um, and we can also check uh, our turn on signal. So, right now what we can do, it is plugged in, um, let's find the grounds, which is pin 12, pin 14, and it's a black, yellow, black, red. Okay, so we got our high current test light bulb hooked up. We're looking for ground, so the one side is on um, battery positive, and our other side here will go into, um, what do we say, black, yellow, black, red, which is 12 and 14. So, might be hard to see here, but that's the second row. So this wire right here is a black yellow, there's a space, and then there's a black red. So we'll go into that first one. Let me just kind of get set up, if I can find it. Come on.
Okay, very bright. That one's good. So we'll go into this one, the next one. Oh, not on there, very good. There we go. So, if you ever get, um, let that be a lesson. If you ever go to do a test and you see nothing, always assume that there's a possibility that you're not making connection. Obviously, if you do a test and you see something, let's just say the bulb lights, then hey, you know you made contact. But if the bulb doesn't light, always assume you're not making connection. So we know that our grounds are good. Now let's check those powers. So if we look here, we have a red wire on pin 28 and a red wire on pin 19. Conveniently, so we'll switch over to ground for our high current test light. Conveniently, they're both right here on the end, one on top of each other. These big fat red wires. It's kind of reddish pink now, but... So if we go into there, we see nothing. And then, if we go into the back one, I know you probably won't be able to see this very well. We also see nothing. Now, let's check that green wire. That's the turn on signal for um, the relay. So in order to do that, we don't want to use high current test light. We'll use our multimeter. Let me put you down for a second while I set this up. Okay, so I got the green wire back probed. Um, that's going to my multimeter. We see it's um, zero volts, basically. And then the, the black wire uh, might be hard to see, but it's coming all the way around to ground. So there is no power on that green wire. That is supposed to be the relay. Um, let me make sure, yeah, headlights are on. Vehicle's still on. All the uh, Prindle display indicators are up and uh, they're completely lit up, uh, square boxes, so that means no calm with the uh, transmission module. And the transmission control module is supposed to be supplying power there to turn on the transmission control relay um, to get its main power feeds. So also to show when I had my high current test light in there and the test light wasn't lighting, you know, I did switch it over to ground for the other side. So really should have tested my equipment because I couldn't get it to light. And sure enough, that means we are on a good ground. You know what I mean? So if you poke a wire and nothing happens, nothing happens, and you know you're making contact, but you kind of expect something to happen, make sure you test your equipment. So that just about nails it, right? Now there's a couple other things we can check. So what I'm going to do, turn that off. Now, if you are astute, you will notice that the tab is broken for this connector, but I assure you this connector is all the way in. I've, I've done all kinds of business of trying to get that to be fully seated and it doesn't make any difference. So if we pull this out. Um, let me put you down for again for another quick second and I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do to test the relay. Okay, so I got it unplugged. Um, this step isn't fully necessary because don't forget, if the transmission control module is not turning on that green wire, well, you know, it's not even attempting to turn on the relay, but still it's a good idea to check that circuit. So what we can do, this green back probing trace is into the red wire. So that's coming from the relay. And that goes to our high current test light, which then comes back around and goes to ground. So on this wire right here, I have it directly hooked up to battery positive. So I will supply my own power to this green wire and that should turn the relay on. And then that power from the relay will come all the way back around to that red wire and my high current test light lights. And then if you go here, you can hear the relay clicking. So I can unplug this so I don't accidentally short this out to somewhere. Um, so is there anything else we can do? Well, sure. What if this green wire 
the turn on for that relay, what if that's the only thing that's bad? If that's the case, then maybe it's not communicating just because it's not receiving power. What if we supply our own power? Now, if we go back to our transmission control wiring diagram, we can see that pin 28 and pin 19, both of those red wires, they are joined at a splice. So, what we can do now, uh, this is hokey, but it means we could, uh, let me get this out of the way. Okay, so I got all the unnecessary junk out of the way. So this is kind of hokey, but what this means, sorry for moving you there, is if this is the only thing that's faulty, um, we can even supply power. Yeah, we'll supply power directly here. Make sure we're in there. It would be super hokey, but what if we supply our own power our full-time power, which of course we could turn into a relay. Um, but if the only part that were bad was that green wire and is not able to turn on that relay itself, so it's not able to get the power, what if we manually supply power? What if it works, right? Then we could wire something in without having to try and find another engine computer because they're getting really hard to find for these cars. So, moment of truth. And nada. So we'll go back here. Just for grins and giggles, we'll try it. Give that a second to load. And these connector tabs, if you can see that very well, um, they are a pain in the butt to get off. You try very carefully not to break them. So what you do is you just one corner at a time, you pry these out a little bit while you get another screwdriver in there and just gently pull it back a little bit and then go to this side, then this side, then this side, and just slowly work it all the way around without trying to force it. Um, and they will come out and then you can get access to the wires. Kimmin. Yeah, and there you go. See? Um, so yeah, uh, nothing else to it. Needs an engine control module or the whole powertrain control module. There's nothing we can do. Um, it's all integrated. We don't really know what failed, why it failed, but um, they're going to have to try and dig up a good one. Uh, that sucks because, yeah, they are getting hard to find, and um, it all depends on the, the particulars of the vehicle for these, these vintages. But anyways, I uh, just kind of want to share this with you. Nice, quick, simple, um, easy to go. Just kind of, you know what? It, it makes sure it has what it needs. And if it has what it needs and it's still not working, then the part's faulty. That's all there is. Um, so just want to say thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Okay, so before I end this video, I do want to mention one quick other thing. We're back on our transmission wiring diagram. Uh, so we down here we have our C4, which is the wire specific to the transmission side of things, and up here we have C1, which is um, for the engine, maybe the transmission. We don't really know. Now it's clear to see that only C1 has our communication lines. There's nothing down here for C4. But looking at this diagram, getting a feel for things, really our powers and our grounds that are responsible for allowing our modules to function insofar as being able to communicate with the scan tool, waking up, all that sort of thing, really is going to be off of C1, even for the transmission. Now, again, I don't know this for 100% certain, uh, but it's easily a bet I'd be willing to make. So, if this thing were buried, absolutely no ifs, ands, buts, call up, you need uh, a whole PCM. Since it's open, easy to get to, hey, it's a good idea to do the testing, uh, to get in the habit of it, check the powers, check the grounds. Uh, you know, on something like this, say if the whole thing were no com, you, not only would, would you want to check the powers of the grounds, you'd also want to check your, your wake up signal, you know, your key on power. Um, sorry, that's down here, the ignition. And you'd want to check all of the communication lines. Not only that, 
but you'd also want to go through and check things like does it have a, a reference voltage that it's putting out you could have a sensor down the way that takes that out that prevents the the module from from functioning these older modules these older computers they didn't really have as good uh, circuit protection inside right so you'd want to check all that you know sometimes you can find something really weird where a really weird input can cause um, you know it can short out and cause the module to prevent not function but going down here we do see there's a couple grounds we do see that there's the powers that come from our relay and really looking that over you know what those are going to be for right here those are going to be for our solenoids so if we follow these wires over we got three four five six three four five six comes here and here's our four solenoids so these use you know on average they'll use one to two amps a piece so that's a sizable amount of current now keep in mind this engine computer or the pcm sometimes it's a manual transmission which in case it does not have these so will not need to power the transmission solenoids um, and then sometimes like this it is an, an automatic and it will need to power those so the the portion for the automatic transmission is going to be a separate chipset however it's really going to use the same powers in the grounds as the engine control module just down here these powers these grounds are going to be there for providing the current for the solenoids however again it's right there it's a good idea to always get in the habit of checking as much as you possibly can and then also you know before you make the call it's a good idea like what we did there where we manually powered our relay and our powers here just to see hey can this thing still function because if it can still function what if it's something external so just wanted to quickly mention that um really seeing what it was doing we could have just called the the entire pcm but you know what we went through we did our due diligence so on that note as always thanks for watching